Hey, what is up guys? Today's video, I'm gonna show you the deck which brought me to 8,000 trophies. Or better say, show you the games with this Royal Hawks. I actually pushed like 600 trophies in around about two and a half hours, I think. So this deck is absolutely insane. It's currently my main deck to use. And I know a ton of people are annoyed, a ton of people hate this deck. But if you guys wanna have success in Clash Royale right now, this is the deck you need to learn. If you guys don't want to miss any videos in the future on the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Also, using Creator Good Morning Shop is highly appreciated, really supporting the channel. So if you guys think about buying these offers, they're not really that great, but if you like need legendaries, you need something else, make sure to use Creator Good Morning Shop. And I would say it's time to jump to the games, and I'm going to show you what makes this deck so good and why you should play it. Here we go guys, you in the first game, so if you're playing this deck, the first thing you need to know is how to play a mirror matchup. How to win a mirror matchup using both the same decks. So this is the big question. I honestly don't know how to win my mirror matchups. I want this one, so I want to show you this, but I already lost also mirror matchups. It's kind of hard to explain, right? So I always feel like it's about an early elixir time or like early elixir time. That's a new word in single elixir time about not over defending. Um, the Royal Hawks kind of accept some damage and also get a ton of Queen's value, right? Queen value is really important. Most of the time I'm really happy when my opponent is dropping delivery log, which is kind of perfect answer against Royal Hawks on top of my Hoggies because the 5 for 5 trade and then Arch King the bridge is kind of good because delivery log is kind of cards he wants to use. So I'm just go for a Queen here in the back and just go Hoggies and honestly these are really really great Hoggies. Um, because he needs to commit a cannon, which he doesn't really want to use. And he also used the, in my opinion at least, unnecessary lock. So, EQ cycle also is really, really important in this matchup. So, I'm just going to use my ability really, really late here. I'm also going to lock this just to make sure that my queen is kind of stunning. Or like the lock is going to stun his queen. Um, and the queens are going to finish off each other. So, um, I think right now, next play is going to be just cycling a fire spirit bridge. He's mostly going to do the same. He's just going to cycle EQ first. So... Really interesting. So he's really going for aggressive EQs. I'm just gonna go for this and now I'm just gonna wait and he's exactly doing what I want. So he cycled his EQ and we actually two elixir an advantage, right? So let's go for the queen high here. He just drops hoggies. So this is his huge mistake. I think he wants to play a cannon. Um, so yes, he's doing a mistake, but this is kind of what you want to do. This is the perfect thing you want to play. You always want to go for a queen high to so exactly some damage. I don't really think I lost the game yet here, or like he lost the game yet, but um, I think he's just gonna lock, so it's basically fine. I think he's still up on damage, or like we're kind of even, so it didn't cost him the game, but going for Queen's High is honestly really, really great, and then might just go for Hoggy Split. So just go for um, this in one lane. Why did I go one lane? Because I knew it's Logger to Cycle, so knowing the opponent's spell, yes, this cycle in general is really 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 good so i'm just gonna go for my ability here i'm now just gonna finish it off with a log i guess the log was kind of late so i'm just gonna go for my cannon here cannon wasn't really good but honestly cannon plus delivery is also a really really solid place so this of course we're gonna go for a fire spirit here and as you guys can see we are down in damage we are actually down in damage the next place is going to be just going for Hoggies here, just going to wait what he's going to do. And you don't really want to go in for an over-aggressive Earthquake. This situation going for Earthquake would be way too aggressive. So, I'm just going to go for my Cannon here. And honestly, this is a situation which looks kind of bad for me. But it's honestly not as bad as people would think. Because I have a full HP Queen and he doesn't have a Stillery. And as you guys will see now, he needs to use cards which he doesn't really want to use. So, he's going to use his Fire Spirit now. Also, and it's still not enough, right? So he needs to go in for his own queen. And this second, I'm gonna go in here. So I'm just gonna go EQ this time because I knew his lock isn't in cycle. So I get a ton of volume. He still uses his cannon. So this was like my really first, really aggressive EQ. And why did I play? Because I knew this perfect answers with the really lock aren't in cycle there. So I'm just gonna clear the pressure here. This time I'm kind of baiting out the delivery. Um, I think with a really early uh, ability here. But I think the ability wasn't really too good. Honestly, it was a really bad um, ability. So I'm just going to go aggressive here because I knew his delivery is out of cycle. So I can just go in for a preemptive earthquake. And he still needs to lock this. And even for lock, I just don't get any damage. Okay, I thought I am going to get damage. So I'm just going for a fire spirit here. I think mm, I'm just going to go for skeletons. Oh, no, I'm just going to go queen first, I guess. Right? Do I go queen? Or am I not going queen? So I'm just going to go hoggies here opposite lane. He's also going to go hoggies. So this is what you really want to do. You kind of want to predict your opponent going for hoggies. Especially when you have the elixir advantage. And we had the elixir advantage. And now it's just about the spell cycle game. I don't really think there's any way for the opponent to come back in this game. And honestly it's a deck which is kind of annoying. I agree. But this is currently my main deck. And I really want to get better with this deck. Um, 
to improve genuine clash roll. This is really good. Delivery first fire is finishing off. I'm just gonna go log EQ because this season I really want to go for a top 20, top 30 finish. I know I can do it, and this is the deck I'm going to use. I feel like a matchup like Balloon is a matchup you guys are really looking forward to see, and this is why I'm showing that. <laughs> Whoa, I'm so smart. So going for Fire Spirit in the bridge in this matchup is okay. Is fine, is good. So I think in this situation, I'm just gonna go and for my Archer Queen. And um, honestly, now I'm just gonna go Hoggis. I maybe shouldn't have done this. I thought in this situation, yeah, okay, he might play um yeah, Golem, Splash Yard, but it was actually a really, really good tornado. So yeah, I was thinking about going for the ability, but I wasn't able to do it. So I only knew it's most likely going to be a Balloon deck. Balloon, not that easy with just one air counter, but which is really, really great is if you play the cannon in the perfect spot, which you will see, I think, with the second cannon that can actually counter um, a Balloon completely. So this is a really good tip, and this is why cannon actually is kind of good right now in this um, deck, and this matchup got better with the last Balloon change. Balloon? Um, doing less damage now, but the attack speed got increased. So I'm just going for my Hoggis here. So in this situation, I'm just going to go in for my late cannon. And normally, I think a cannon, like the balloon would have got like two hits, two big shots. Um, but in this situation, mm, it doesn't. So it gets just one shot and also less damage overall, which is kind of great. This is what this wasn't the, uh, the perfect um, cannon place I was talking about, but you guys will see it next. I guess we know. So I think this case, I'm just going to go cycle my skeletons most likely or log. I think skeletons. Um, I still thought in this situation that he had bowler, but um, he has packer. <laughs> he has packer. So I think I'm just going to cycle log here. Yeah, cycling my log and just going for an arch screen is completely fine. You guys will see the matchup in single next time isn't that bad. Also in double, it's not too bad, but in triple, it gets really rough when he's like spamming his troops. I'm just gonna go for my cannon like this, and this is exactly what you wanna do. So he was like trying to go in for a freeze, and this is why I'm exactly pressuring right now. I'm going really aggressive here. So in this situation, I'm just gonna go for a freeze here. I'm, I was like thinking this, he's not enough, well, he doesn't have enough elixir. Honestly, the fire spirit is still okay because of that. The arch screen dies. But this is fine. So tower goes down to 2k. Mm. I think I'm just gonna go in for a Q here and he just goes and lumberjack in the back. So he's not using his packer yet. Kind of surprising for me that he's not really using the packer. Uh, but it's fine. Just going for my Archer Queen here. I think this situation I'm just gonna go for a log and the log cycle is honestly doing really well. So this situation I'm doing a big mistake because I should have used my ability now because it was kind of obvious that he's gonna NATO but my ability comes out a bit too late and now we're like strangling him. I'm just gonna set up a cannon now. Now it's about being or like defending efficiently. Not really trying to defend it flawless because he will get one balloon shot. I'm kind of sure about that. But making sure I'm not gonna lose here anything. So I'll just go for my delivery here. Honestly a really good delivery. Let's go for a fire spirit here. Kind of annoying right now that the baby tank survives with zero HP so I need to go for this. Now I'm just gonna go in for my another cannon here I guess. And I'm just going to go for my really, really high um, Archer Queen here. And I knew he doesn't have Freeze and Cycle. And this is like kind of close. Kind of lucky even maybe. But this is really, really great. So my Queen still is still alive. I know he doesn't have his best counters in hand. So he needs to go for a Lumberjack. I'm just going to go for my Lock here. I should have locked earlier. I should have locked way earlier to get way more damage. He's going to Freeze on defense. I'm just going to use my Q here just about cycling back to another Lock Q. Especially when you have the Queen in the hand. You cannot cycle to another Queen. So actually the Queen is out of hand. So this is what I'm like talking about. Like every single video of doing a Champions deck. That you have a free card cycle. We don't have a free card cycle right now. Because the Queen isn't on the map. But still, cheap cycle, easy win, let's go. So guys, you're actually next game against this guy. This guy, I don't really like him. He's like winsting a ton of people or like a lot of people. Actually, like what was win trading about is just like saying you're going to chai trade one. So you're not going to play anything. And at the end, you're just going to finish them. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so I'm just going to Warlocks here. I have my Q ready. And honestly, this matchup against... Just giant graveyard you should win normally like 90 percent of the time i mean his version isn't really too it I mean it depends right and defense for sure ebabs are way um worse than dark Prince against warlocks but on offense it could be like for him in offense for me in defense could be way harder to defend ebabs so honestly it was a perfect defense um so far really happy about that so he's just gonna go bats most likely and giant so he's just gonna giant here he can't graveyard so i'm just gonna use my ability now really really early i'm just gonna go deliver here honestly really really smart play here so in this situation, I'm just going to think about going in for Hoggies. Um, so I'm just going to go Hoggies here. He would just go Snowball and I knew he's just going to go Skeleton Army. So my lock comes a bit too late. Should have played earlier. But I still think it's valuable because at least the one Hoggie tanks with um, more HP. 
So Tauda goes down to 2k. This is what you really want to do, especially when he doesn't have uh, his Dark Bits in hand. If you would have normally placed a Dark Bits version instead of the E-Bubs, um, you want to be really, really aggressive. And this is exactly what we did. So I think in this case, I'm just going to Fire Spirit Bridge. Do I? Yeah, I'm just going to Fire Spirit because I know like he could play bats, right? But this is a plus one elixir trade. Now I can just go Skeletons on top of his Musketeer. I'm going to leak a bit. Um, so Skeletons here. And I think right now I'm just going to go... I don't really know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go Queen in the back. Okay. I was like thinking, okay, in this situation I was like, oh, that could be kind of tough that he goes opposite lane or all in. But it's actually fine. So I'm not really deciding to go in for my Hoggies here. Because otherwise he would have just go for a tower trade. So what I'm going to do right now... I'm just gonna go in for my ability here. I'm just gonna go also for my lock to make sure it still gets some counter push potential. And now I'm just gonna go deliver here. And it's the yeah, it's still some damage, right? But I can just go in for skeletons and make sure that we are like kind of minimating uh mitigating the damage. So I'm just gonna fire spit again at the bridge. Fire spit honestly in this card uh, deck is kind of key. You can also use Electro Spirit, but Fire Spirit just for the aggressive pressure. And also delivery fire spirit kills a lot, like Skelly Dranks, Flying Machine. This is like the main reason we have fire spirit and also chip damage and not giving the opponent a free king deactivation. Also bats against bats. Fire spirit is also really, really solid, even not as solid as the E spirit is. So waiting one second and then going for the EQ, then we need to get like a perfect timing. Just about like we experience, I would say, um, take some time to know when the um, EQ is not there anymore that you need to go for the lock. But this is kind of just game experience and just like playing the game a lot. Um, kind of learn how long the EQ really, really does help against the Nani? <laughs> gets the graveyard and I know he's kind of toxic opponent so I'm just gonna go for the BM yeah Morton is sometimes also toxic yes I'm also BMing opponents let's go so yeah because he wouldn't steal some friends of mine um I think last season and he's kind of his behavior is kind of toxic and he also plays Jane Graveyard I was like okay so everyone's like saying Morton is always a nice guy always never BMs in life yeah I'm also sometimes I'm also a dirty BMer but yeah, great game. Let's go. Here we go, guys. Here in the final Reaper, which I want to show you against a really tough Grey Reaper variation. He has Tesla, he has Bowley, he has Valkyrie. So, honestly, a match which I'm really proud of winning. And I think we played this really, really well. So, I'm just going for Skeletons in the back to cycle. I'm also going to go for a Log. I mean, cycling an Earthquake is fine. Going for Skeletons, Fires, but Log, EQ are like my favorite starting place. You could also go for Hoggies. Um, I just go for Hoggies basically when I have Fire Spirit and Skeletons in hand. Because in case the opponent is Mega Knighting, I'm just going to go Skeletons in the middle and then Fire Spirit to King. Why this and not Fire Spirit Skeletons? Because if you go Fire Spirit first and then Skeletons, good players, good players will go for Zap or Snowball prediction. So, going for Snowball first and then going for the Fire Spirit, even if your opponent is going to Zap predict the. Uh, yeah. The Fire Spirit will still survive and the Mega Knight will go to King Tower. So, I'm just going to go for my Queen back early on. Um, this is fine. He just used this. So, I think I'm going to do a 3-1 split. Uh, this is at least what I always like to do. Kind of supporting the Queen. So, as you guys will see, this is kind of a ton of damage. Um, yeah. I mean, he activates King Tower, right? But in, I'm like in a situation. I'm like, okay, he's going to activate King Tower anyway. He has Tesla and Nado. So, there's like no way for me to not let him activate King. If it makes sense. So, I'm just going to cycle lock here because I've also got for something else. And I think just going for fire spirit always at the bridge is fine. Especially when he doesn't have skeletons. He has a really cheap cycle, a really cheap graveyard cycle variation. Or like, not really cheap graveyard cycle variation. He has any skeletons in the deck. So, he has some cycled cards. Um, but honestly, against our deck, we will, able, we will always be able to cycle our opponents. So, yeah. So in this case, I'm not going to go in for EQ on top of his Tesla. Why not? Because it would be over commitment and with the activate King Tower, it, really, really, it wouldn't really make sense. And also against Grave, you don't really want to overcommit. So this is a really good ability, still forcing something out. And I can just go lock in the middle. Why do I really like to go... This is like a tip which I kind of learned over playing this deck against Graveyard, which is like a really great tip I can give you guys now, is trying to split a ton of Hoggies early on. Because if you go in for same lane push, your opponent is going to go same lane. Against Graveyard, same lane, similar to Golem and stuff, isn't really, really good. So you don't really want to push same lane against Graveyard. Graveyard is even harder because every time they play a troop, they can counter push with it. Not like with Golem, because Golem is way more expensive. But at example, he's going to... At example, he's playing his Valkyrie. He can counter push with the Valkyrie. At example, he's playing his bowler. He can counter push with the bowler and just grave it on top. So this is kind of the problem in this matchup. So splitting up damage is great. I mean, you shouldn't split up too much damage, but this is kind of what I think. Mm, yeah, you should do in this matchup because if you go too much in the same lane, you will just overwhelm. I mean, this is why I lost the game earlier um, against Graveyard. So 
I think in this situation, I'm just gonna go in for EQ here because my cycle is bad. My cycle is bad. Now I'm just gonna go for Hoggies here. I'm just gonna support it one on this side into a bowler, but I just want the queen to survive. Now it's gonna be a really dumb interaction. Abracadabra, man! That the queen dies from the bowler. Bowler range actually underrated, so we can just go in for another great Valkyrie tanks. Aggressive poison going for the EQ. As I said, you really want to wait as long as you can. And now I'm just gonna go for my lock. Yeah, honestly, the Valkyrie connect wasn't really like planned, so he's kind of coming back in this game, or isn't it? Really, I mean, what means kind of coming back? It was always kind of even, but he gets the damage advantage now. So I'm just going for another Q. He needs to go for a bowler, and this bowler puts him in a really good spot because this is what I said with Fire Spit. It does a ton of damage, so I can just go for my Log. And as you guys will see, the Queen gets a ton of value. So I'm just going for another Split Hogs here. I'm just also going to Log here, and the uh, Hoggies actually will get a ton of damage on the right, it forcing out another Ice Whiz. And also on the left, we got with the Q Log chip damage a ton of damage. So I'm just gonna go for skeleton C. I was thinking about just going hoggies that he cannot really go graveyard poison. He still does, so I can just go in for this. I just go for EQ. He still needs to go for Valkyrie, and this is kind of how we got a really good positioning and how got a 600 damage advantage. Just an example, or like in the situation, he goes in for a graveyard. Kind of you can predict it with a hoggies, or also just go at the same time because. Your graveyard answers are kind of cheap, right? So going for 5 elixir hog is still having 5 elixir in hand, especially in double when elixir comes really, really good um, or really fast. Just going for cannon, EQ, and all this stuff. So I'm just going to go for my fire speed. I'm just going for the delivery here. I'm just going to go for a log. So it's kind of um, important to also be multitasking all the time, like keeping your uh, queen alive, using the ability, defending, and going on offense at the same time. So I'm just going for my log here, trying to get some chip. Um, just knowing that we're in a good spot. So in this situation, I'm just gonna go for my cannon here. Honestly, not really, really too good because I cannot go in because of the ice wizard. So right now I think I'm just gonna go in. I'm also gonna go for this on defense. I'm just gonna go for my delivery here. And now I'm just gonna wait here for the lock. This is kind of close right now because the bowl I think gets one shot, which is really annoying. And also he's gonna be able to do this. So right now it's just about going for the EQ here. And also right now going for hoggies. Why I'm just gonna go for hoggies here that yeah, I'm keeping up the pressure. I'm just going for skeletons here. I don't really want to be cycling back to another poison. So I'm just going for the EQ here and actually EQ out gonna kill the skeleton so the hog is connected so we don't need to be worrying about kind of getting finished before of the poison over the earthquake so this is a really great game really like showing how to win against graveyard decks in general even if this version is way tougher than the ice wizard tombstone deck because tesla eq doesn't really do well that well against tesla and he had valkyrie and bowler if you guys don't want to miss any recent future channel don't forget to subscribe also using critical modern shop is highly appreciated i would say i'm out thanks for watching and goodbye guys